Hi everyone, welcome back to Jake's Bench. Today we're looking at this adapter that I remixed off of some designs off of Thingiverse to mount the URUAV uh, Fat Shark module adapter to the side of your DJI digital FPV goggles. So here is the final design. This is how you in install it. Uh, you put a M5 GoPro nut in the bottom and then uh, you can just use a GoPro screw. I'm assuming a lot of us have these just kicking around. Uh, if you don't, I uh, also just experimented with just using an M5 screw and a nut. That works just fine. You take your stack up here. I have some different size foam and foam tape. I just kind of experimented to see to get the best fit on there. And you don't want um, you don't want it to be super high angle because then when it crushes the foam down, you're going to be putting a lot of stress on the components around here. So you just want it to have a little bit of an angle, and so when it squishes down, everything's nice and level. And I mean, installation's about as easy as it gets. You you take your module stack up. You drop it inside of the bottom case. You take your cover, line up your antenna holes and all the other holes, and there you go, done. Then installing the mount on the goggles is fairly straightforward too. You take the two screws that hold the head strap off. Uh, you install the 3D printed part and then you put the screws back in. Now you have your uh, rigid mount on your goggles. I also incorporated another little feature that I saw other 3D prints out there to do the same thing. Uh, a lot of guys want to have a secure way to hold the cord while they're plugged in and doing uh, digital only mode. So with this you can plug your power in and then push the cable down into there. I included an angle uh, on this side of the mount so that the cord would fit in there and then wrap around the headset and uh, You have a really nice secure that cable is not going anywhere It's not going to accidentally unplug if you stand up and and pull on the cord or anything So I thought that was a cool little way to integrate another feature into that and then also included on the Thingiverse site uh, is this little adapter that's just the wings of the main module you can mount anything you want with this, but what I use it for is for mounting this HDMI to uh, analog uh, thing on the side so I can plug in the HDMI to my computer and then analog out into the goggles and I can then fly sims uh, with my goggles. So it's pretty neat. Uh, I also found if you end up using this exact same adapter in the uh, manual, it says that it needs to be plugged into USB power. I found that just having it plugged into um, HDMI powers this thing, uh, so it, you don't have to have all those extra cables uh, st strung around. All right, so a little background for those of you who might not be familiar with this, but the DJI digital uh, goggles, obviously, as the name implies, only receive digital. They don't receive analog. So those of us who still have a lot of analog quadcopters and planes sticking around, it's a, kind of a hassle to have to bring two goggles out to the field if you want to fly digital and analog. So pretty much right after the launch of these goggles, um, uh, a company called URUAV came out with this uh, adapter board, which is basically uh, just a port to allow you to plug in Fat Shark modules and a 5 volt uh, regulator to power those modules. First thing I recommend on the version 2 boards is desolder this little switch. Um, in my experience, my professional life, I've seen these things fail a lot, and not to mention the amount of current we're pushing. Through. The whole current for the whole goggle runs through this thing. So when you're talking running a rapid fire system off a of 2S, this thing is pushing an amp and a half, and that's a lot of current for a little switch like this. So I I don't mind plugging and unplugging my goggles. I, in fact, I prefer it so I don't accidentally leave it plugged in and, and discharge the battery. So with this strapped down to the side of, the, of your goggles, now you can go back to flying analog again. It comes with this little Delrin mount and it's uh, not a bad system. It's rigidly mounted to the side of your goggles. 
Um, drawback is you can't ever take it off uh, if you wanted to put it in a smaller case. Uh, and also, it's kind of a circuit board hanging off the side of your goggles. So you have this, you have your expensive module and you got your expensive goggles and it's just... I, I uh, went back and zip tied the included cover up back onto my rapid fire module here to try to make it look a little bit better. Wrap some tape around the edges. Uh, I'll throw in a picture here. But it's still just, I don't know, it looked a little, a little shabby for, uh, for a $500 goggle system. So I went on the search to try to find something that I could uh, mount this guy up to the side of my goggles and um, have it be removable and just make it look a little bit nicer. So that's when I came across this mount from the Maker Boys. And overall, I think it's a very well designed mount. Um, nice 3D printing quality on it. But the drawback is, is it holds the module fairly far away from your head. So it's a lot of weight off to the side. It, um, like I said, it holds it far away, and the mount itself is heavy. This it's very thick TPU on the bottom. It contours nicely to to the goggles, but it's just a lot of extra weight to strap on the side of your head. So, after about two flights, I knew that it wasn't going to be the solution for me. So I went back to just having it zip tied to the side of the unit. But then I bought a new case to put my goggles and my uh, transmitter in and the uh, having this permanently installed on the side no longer fit inside that case. So I went back on the search to try to find something that I could uh, 3D print and install on my goggles. And that's when I came across this design. Uh, unfortunately it was for the version 1 of the URUAV adapter board. So I needed to get to work on modifying it. This was the, my first print, and as you can see, I dremeled out the inside to make it fit. And I thought, oh, great, it fits. Uh, but they changed the way the holes line up for the version 2, so this wasn't going to work. Also, I felt like this was kind of unnecessarily bulky. It was a, actually a fairly heavy print. And again, I'm trying to get away from having something heavy on the side of my goggles. So I decided to go and start redesigning this case. Now I have next to no 3D design experience. So I tried to start using Fusion 360 and it was just overload from the very beginning trying to get into that program and learn. So I actually did all of this work with Windows 10 included 3D, the 3D Builder software, which I think is pretty powerful for what you can do just simple stuff like this I mean you're not going to be designing uh, the new car with it but uh, doing stuff like this I think is right up its alley so I really highly recommend to messing around with that if you want to get into 3D design so uh, first step was just slimming it down uh, I, I should found out pretty quickly too that this original design with the way that these angled plugs into it um, they actually weren't going to work out they weren't gonna they would plug in but not far enough so I went to uh, reducing the edges from the outside here so that when you would plug these in they would they would go in uh, more snugly and uh, actually do do the full connector so see bad holes holes are still bad Still have a bad hole. Lots of uh, of going through and redesigning all of that stuff. So finally, version number six was good, and that's when I started experimenting with how to actually mount it to the side of the goggles. Uh, Painless 360 uh, just uploaded this file when I was designing this. That is meant to, so you put this side on the goggles, and then you put this side on your adapter or whatever, and then uh, you can slide it in. As you can tell, I had a lot of problems trying to print this thing properly, um, and that's one of the reasons I didn't want to use it. Also, I felt like it should be a little bit bigger, like the size of the whole module. Anyway, let's see if this one works. So yeah, that's, that's the way to slide in. That would hold it, and it's actually got this nice little lever here. So you can pull the lever, and then you'd slide it off your goggle, and now you're, it's disconnected. Um, but again, I couldn't get it to print nice. It's attaching to the contour here. So you can 
so that's kind of a flat deal. Anyway, I just didn't like the way that was turning out. So this design originally has included this little glue-on piece, but again, it holds it far away from the goggle. I added weight, torque in the goggle, trying to get away from that. So I thought I'll take these wings and integrate it right into the mount itself. So now the wings are part of the mount and I went through a couple different revisions of spacing and um, with 3D printing a lot of different people have different printers and they're set up differently so I wanted it to have enough gap here where uh, you could have a slightly out of tune 3D printer but it would still print fairly decently. Um, but at the same time you don't want to make it too sloppy because then like for this is how the cover snaps on you don't, you don't want the it's like this is a loose fit you don't you don't want it to be this loose because then if your antenna snags on something it can just pop right off and that's not good either so i went through a lot of revisions to try to get to kind of tweak that in so it would be loose enough to work on bad printers but tight enough where you'd get a good experience from using it and so i eventually landed on this one this is the final design this is the same version, but in white. I was starting to run out of black filament, so I went to printing prototypes in white instead, and now printed the final version in, in that. So I'll do a little experiment here. So this is one of the covers that has a really good grip on it. You can just tell, by the way, that clicks in. So let's grab a gauge here and see what we can pull it off at. I got it hooked up in there. Just gonna pull it. Okay, let's reset it. So that was about six pounds. So it, uh, I was kind of impressed with how well that thing grips onto there for being a fully 3D printed part. So yeah, I hope that uh, some of you out there uh, find this, these files useful. Uh, feel free to tell your buddies if they have DJI goggles and they're looking for a solution like I was. Um, I like to see more people using it. Feel free to give me feedback. Again, this is kind of the most complex thing I've ever designed. And I know a lot of designers out there are going to be giggling at that. But I uh, had a lot of fun. If you have any other ideas, uh, shoot me a message and I'll see what I can do.